morning, new life. So good to see all y'all this morning. Everybody enjoyed that extra hour of sleep last night? Yes. Amen. If you're not already standing, I invite you to stand and worship with us this morning. Search the world, it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, the treasures that fade are never enough. And then you came along and put me back.
Lord, we just praise you in the house this morning, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor for you are so deserving, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord says if we don't praise him, the rocks are going to cry out, right? So, Lord, we thank you, God, for you are merciful and you are wonderful, Lord. We have come into the house today not out of religiosity, not out of just the thing to do, but to praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords and to meet with him here. The Bible tells us in Psalms um, 113, praise the Lord. Praise, O oh servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised. It is a praise psalm. We're coming into the house of the Lord. There's so many things that are most, that we're thinking about, that our minds are on, those, our schedules, our troubles, our problems. What's going on? What, what, how are things going to happen? But it's like I prayed this morning. We have to, for a, another couple, we have to channel all of that and focus it not on the wind and the waves, but to focus it on the one who is in charge and in control over the winds and the waves. Amen? No, I got it. Um, and the enemy wants us to be distracted by that. But we are... He that sent us is stronger than he that is in the world. And he is wise and he has given us the instruction of what to do. And you know what? <clears throat> if we'll just praise him, if we just have a song in our heart and joy in our heart and set our feet planted firmly on the solid rock of Jesus and sing praises unto the Lord, when we praise, we bring Jesus on the scene. We are exalting him and lifting him on high. And that is what our job is to do. It doesn't matter about the need. He knows the need. It doesn't matter about the physical ailment that we feel in our body because he's the creator. It doesn't matter about what's in your checkbook or what's going on because he's in control of it all. What all only thing that matters is you and him and loving on him and praising him and giving him glory and giving him honor and he will work all the rest of it out. Amen. Amen. It's my pleasure to be and pastor this house with my husband John. If you're new here this morning, we ask that you let one of our ushers know or scan the QR code in front of your seat or online. Just drop us a line and let us know that you're new here. But I want to finish Psalms 113, and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we're not going to ask Him for anything, and we're not going to... All we're going to do is just praise Him. We're going to praise Him with the breath that He woke us up with this morning. We're going to praise Him with the hands that He gave us. And if you feel a dance in you, you praise God that way. David did. Whatever it is in you, it is not about this place or you. It's just about praising Almighty God and how He fills it up in you. Amen? Amen. So going back, praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets. The name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high? Who is like him? Who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, with the princes of their people. He settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of her children. He is a breaker of barrenness. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord together. Lift your voice and let's go into the Holy of Holies. Lord God, we come into this place to worship you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the light of this world. You are the light that is in us. You are the breaker of chains. You are the one who sets the captives free. You are the one that brings truth and wisdom. And you are the one that lets us see.
see what we have not been able to see. You are the one that opens our ears, that brings the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you speak to us. You guide us. You direct us. You are loving towards us. You contend with us. You don't forget about us. You keep on and on and on, and you run after us when we are running away. Holy Spirit, we love you. Forgive us for the times that we have turned you aside. Forgive us for the times where we have done opposite of what you have said. But this morning, we praise you. We praise you on the song. We praise you on the stringed instrument. We praise you with our voice. We praise you with our bodies. We praise you, God, for you are worthy to be praised. You are King of kings and Lord of lords and the great I am. We thank you for the breath in our bodies. We thank you, God, that you loved us, and loved us enough to pull us out of the miry clay to set our feet on a solid ground. We thank you, Lord, for our families, for this church. We bless you, God. We bless your name. We bless you for you are most high. We praise you for being our healer. We praise you for being our banner. We just praise you. God, there is none but you. Forgive us when our focus has been on everything else but you. Lord, we center up. And this morning, there is nothing and no one more important than you. We lay it aside. Speak to us, guide us, and help us. Because we are nothing without you. In Jesus' name.
praise a hallelujah oh, with everything inside of me I raise a hallelujah see how I will watch the darkness flee and I raise a hallelujah oh in the middle of my mystery I raise a hallelujah oh because Lost your hold on me And I'm gonna see Oh, in the middle of the storm You see Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated Oh, the King is alive All right, all right, listen. Here's the thing. They, they're going to stay right there. They're going to stay right there. And this may be a little unusual for some of y'all, but you need to get out of it. Come on, somebody. Some of you have been fighting and struggling a battle that you can't win on your own. And you've been trying to pray your way out of it, but you can't pray your way out of it. I know that may sound odd to you, but you've prayed all that you know how to pray. And God's already, God set the camp already and the defense is in the and the and the offense is where they need to be but just like Jericho just like when he told the, the, the people you put the praisers in the beginning this is what you need to do you got to praise your way out of that this morning and so here's what I want you to do and you say well I'm not comfortable with that I don't really care what you're comfortable with and I don't think God is either in fact you need to quit doing what you're comfortable with and start doing whatever's gonna bring you victory some of you need to get out of your seat, walk around, get to this altar, pray, shout, run, dance, whatever you need to do to bless the Lord and get the funk off of you and get yourself victorious in the name of Jesus. So this thing says, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Why? Because when you praise God, he shows up in the middle of it. You create that mercy seat we've been talking about by your praise. And he shows up. And when he shows up, stuff changes. The battles are won. God showed us this. The battles are won not by fighting first. The battles are won by praising first. And then God fights the battle for you. So we're going to do this again. And I don't know how long we're going to do it, but I want you. I don't know. It just may be one person God has me talking to. I doubt it. And if you're watching this online, you can do it right there in your living room while you, or while you're driving down the road. Keep your eyes open. Pull over on the side or whatever. Just do it wherever you are. But get yourself loose. Shake off those heavy bands. Lift up your holy hands. Dance before the Lord. David said, I'll make a total fool out of myself if that's whatever I got to do if it bring God glory. You say, well, can that bring God glory? David was called a man after God's own heart, and he said it brought him glory. So I'll let all the sophisticated people decide if it's right or wrong. I'm just going to bless him. Amen? So we're going to do it again, and we're going to keep doing it. And you need to praise God and get out of that stuff in the name of Jesus. Come on. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'm going to sing. Yes. In the middle of the storm. <laughs> louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Out from the ashes. Hope will arise. Death is defeated. Oh, the King is alive. Oh, and I'm going to sing. In the middle of the storm.
in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, oh, you're, you're gonna, gonna hear my praises roar. roar. You see, up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, oh. Praise in the house, will you? Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody shout victory. Come on, shout victory. Praise you, Lord. Go ahead, Melissa. Jehovah, he's seated on the throne. Have a father, the well that overflows, the God who was and is and shall be forevermore. Holy is the Lord.
short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do But every song must end And you never do so I'll throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else to fit for a key.
I can have the prayer team come up, please. We've been praising the Lord. We've been lifting Him on high. We've been letting it go. And now we're going to bind with a prayer warrior. And we're going to ask for this thing to be demolished. Amen. If you need prayer this morning, I want you to come up to one of these. I don't know what it might be, but God knows. And you might just come up and say, I don't know, but just pray. Whatever it is, don't miss your opportunity to come up and pray with one of these. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They've been praying. This is your time. There's freedom in the house today. There's joy in the house today. Amen. Melissa, if y'all just play something kind of soft. You can sing, but just let it be soft for right now. Are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still. Yeah. 
best we can see it wanders or steal what you do Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isn't it so beautiful to see God at work? And we started this service praising God, lifting God up in the prayer time. The song service led us into more praise. Pastor led us into more praise. I just love it when I see how God keep moving in the same vein. Amen. You may have been sitting in your seat and not come up, but I want to tell you that God is there for you. If you're online, God is there for you. Don't go this thing alone. If you need help, if you need someone, reach out. God is there. Lord, we thank you for this time of ministry. We thank you for a time of healing. We thank you for a time of just revelation we thank you for a time of freedom god that you have given us today and given us in this house and given this house lord we thank you we praise you for you are good and you are wonderful and we love you y'all tell the lord how much you love him Amen. we love you lord we love you god we love you god we love you god everything that is in us god we love you we adore you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Won't y'all love this praise team? And these musicians? They just listen to the Lord and sing the right songs and the right tempo and the right level of high and low. Unlike me, I get going and I get up here and I, it's hard for me to come back down. <laughs> Whew. 
Last week, we had so much going on, and with the baby dedication, we uh, neglected to uh, finish out our last video for our ministry um, in motion time. And I wanted to give uh, them their last recognition of video, and I want to thank our media team and Pastor Dustin and Pastor Lindsay for doing such a good job with all of that. <coughs> So I think we got a video, right guys? All right, so let's turn to that and look at that for a moment. Is that it? <clears throat> Y'all give them a hand. <clears throat> one of the ones not presented with, uh, <clears throat> one of the ones not represented on the Awana group was our games director, Clay Farmer, and Todd and Greg helped Clay. <clears throat> he has the game fun time, and I want to tell you, we couldn't do it without him, right, gang? So all of our Awana teachers and our children's church and Sunday school teachers, if you will just come down to the front, please. <clears throat> yeah, that's you, children's church, <clears throat> Awana, Sunday school. <clears throat> no, they haven't been dismissed. All right. This is some of our team. Greg's back there in the back. Todd's somewhere. Oh, here's Lindsay. She was double duty in it. Guys, I want to tell you, all of these folks work hard. You know, it's hard to get up out of the bed. You know, some of us like to, you know, do something else on Sunday. Or, well, I think I'm just going to take a break Sunday. Um, these guys are always here. They're always ready to serve. They're always here for your kids. And Wednesday night crew is even harder because it's a, we tired. We get off at 5 o'clock. We tired. We don't want to come and, and, and listen to screaming kids. 
but we push ourselves. I'm being honest, but we push ourselves and we get there. And then in the moment, their smiles and their hugs and their love, and then we realize the importance of what we're doing. And we just shake off that tiredness, and we do, and we love, and we serve our children. But the children are the heart of this church, and uh, these we could not do it without these people. So if you would give them a hand of honor. <clears throat> That's really kind of weak, I think. Lord, we ask your blessing to be upon this group. We cannot, uh, we cannot operate without them. We thank you for every seed that is planted in these hearts, we, for the, the, the children. We thank you for how they minister to the children and also, in essence, minister to the families. We thank you, Father. Give them strength. Give them wisdom. Give them creativity. Give them um, everything that they need when the enemy tries to come against them and tell them they're not doing enough or they're not making a difference. I pray, God, that you would just undergird them and let them know how loved and valuable they are and that we do not know this side of heaven all the seeds that have been planted for your glory. And we thank you for them and we honor them today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Y'all can go have a seat. And while we're doing that, Children's Church can go ahead and be dismissed. We thank you, little ones, for sitting so patiently. For those who are new at New Life, we always keep our children in service with us so that they can be with us as we worship and they can experience what it's like uh, with moves of God. There was a generation where children were put away in children's church and came out in fifth grade and they were a little bit scared of what was going on in the altars. And we want to raise up a generation that knows what the move of God is, to how to be quiet and reverent and respectful of the move of God, and that it is wonderful to see uh, God move in the altars. Amen. Um, <clears throat> I was supposed to do one more thing, I believe, so give me a second. We, uh, Pastor, come on up. We're going to do the membership. Um, but uh, Tina and uh, Paul can come on up as well. Uh, we had membership class this morning. I want to thank Norlisa and Michael for always being available and ready to provide uh, such a beautiful display in the food. Thank you for being my right hand and doing all those beautiful things. It was just ready and it tasted so good. Uh, we had that membership class this morning. Um, I uh, couldn't do it without them. And there was one more thing I was going to say, and I just have lost what it was, but it might come back to me. So I'm going to let you pick up. Okay. Senior thing, yes. The sen uh, seniors, that was one of them. Senior gathering today at 3 o'clock here in the fellowship hall. Uh, they tell me if you're 50 and up, you can come. It's just a time of information and trying to find out what we want to do. And uh, they want to tell you some things that are available. Uh, Brother and sis, Pastor uh, and Sister Frazier are going to be heading up that ministry. I'll give them a hand for doing that. If you're 50, if you're 50 and above, raise your hand. Y'all liars back there. Little liars. Y'all know who's up there? No, there might not be no 50s up there. Al might be. He is. Oh, he is. Uh huh. All right. Anyhow, 50 and above, y'all can come on out, and uh, we appreciate 50, 50, that. 50 is the new 30. Men's meeting Monday, 6 30. Y'all make sure y'all come to that. And uh, anyhow, I think I'm out of here. You're out of here? All right. There's quite, that's just, that's just the transition right there, right? <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. Um, you guys know that um, during COVID, we, uh, we had to stop doing some of the things that we normally do, and we're picking all that stuff back up as we move along. And so we are, uh, we're getting our classes back together. Look for those, because some of you are like, um, when do we, how do we get to join the church? What, is, what does that mean? Or, you know, how do I find out what my gifting is and how can I serve and, and all those things And we have different classes, uh, that will be coming along and starting. So pay attention to the announcements, to the emails, to the things that we put on social media. Um, 
and and because we we run them all the time and people go I just I never heard of that and we talk about them and but it's there so um, do that but this morning we met um, and we just had two that showed up this morning but two hey man Paul and Tina Richard Richard now for the Richard that's right that's the that's the good way to say it um, they um, for for a long time we thought it was Ricard because it was a misspelling and uh, and and I thought you guys were connected to the Star Trek people by some way, um, <laughs> but anyhow they have uh, been a part of this church for a long time already and uh, and probably would have done this before now um, had it not been for all the things that happened but I'm glad we've come to this place Amen we're grateful that they are with us and uh, and know that God has. And amazing things in store for them. They're already serving in different ways and uh, just look forward to more amazing things. That, and so we, we took care of all of our, our membership things in the back there um, during the class. But I do want to uh, present them to you as a body and say if there's anyone who has any legal objection to them becoming a member and a part of this body, is now is the time that you need to say that. <laughs> I saw a couple... Uh, <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. I didn't think there would be. But anyways, it, it is an honor to, uh, to, to have you guys to be part of the family. And uh, you already are. Um, but this is just official. I told them this morning, this is, like, this is like the difference between being engaged on Friday and married on Saturday, right? And so, uh, if you will, I want you to stretch your hands this way. And then, if you, if you don't know them and haven't met them... Uh, they are fantastic to get to know and to be around, and they just have the love of the Lord in their heart, and it just oozes out of them. So take some time, and get to know them, and spend some time with them. You will not regret it. Um, just stretch your hands this way. Father, thank you so much for this amazing couple that you've led our way and, and, and now become part of this New Life family. Lord, we thank you for, um, for church. For the church family, we thank you that you established the church and you gave us this body not only to represent you but to be family and encouragement to us. And so, I God, I just thank you for them. I look forward to the great things you're going to do through this through this covenant partnership, Lord. That the, the the gifts and the talents that they have and the differences that they're going to make in this body and in this community for you and for us, Lord God. And so we thank you for that. I speak blessing over them, Lord God. And as we move forward. Forward, Lord, that we will all see the goodness of you in them and in this body. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise, will you? <clears throat> Let me also mention one other thing before I get into the message um, this morning. Um, last Sunday was Reformation Sunday, and uh, on Reformation Sunday, we normally receive an offering for our retired ministers. And uh, we did not get to do that because of all the different things going on. And quite honestly, it just flew right by me. Um, but we have already, uh, what we do here, and I don't know if, if we, we do send things to the state and all, but, but what we like to do here is, is to make sure we take care of the ones that are sitting right here in the sound of our voices. Amen? Amen. And we are blessed to have uh, Pastor and Sister Frazier with us. And, and they're no stranger to this place. Um, they pastored this church for 20 years and uh, now been back for several years after their retirement and still doing ministry. Don't, don't mistake that. Um, and still working for the Lord. And uh, we're just so honored to have you guys here. We've already given them a small gift from the church. And I say small. It's probably big to some folks and small to other ones. But it's, not, it's certainly not wor what they're worth. Amen. But it's just something to say that we love you and that we bless you. Now, here's what we're going to do. For the rest of this month, we're going to receive offering um, as you just include it with your tithe and offering and just make sure that you note it for Reformation Sunday or a retired minister gift or whatever it is. And I want to beat what was done last year. Now, I won't tell you what was done last year, but uh, I want to tell you it was pretty good. Now, here's the way you can beat it. You just beat what you did last year. And you say, well, the Lord didn't lay that on my heart. Yes, he did, because he laid it on my heart, and I'm telling you to do it. All right, and you say, well, Pastor, I wanted to give you something. You know Christmas is coming. That's okay. You just give it to them. God will take care of me and you for Christmas, okay? I want you to bless them. Amen? Because the man of God 
is worthy. Amen. The woman of God is worthy. So I want you to bless them. And I want you to know, uh, Brother Sister Frazier, how much we love you guys. And uh, we respect you and honor you. And, uh, and we still look forward to all the great things that are coming your way as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So if you haven't tithed or, or offered yet, um, then you go ahead and do that. There's several ways for you to do it. You can leave it here. There's ways um, online in the app, uh, text to give. I mean, we make it pretty convenient for you. There's some people who've automated it just because, you know, a lot of times what we do is the things that are really important, like our house payment and our car payment, right? We automate those things, right, to make sure they get done. Let me promise you this. Nothing more important in your financial life than giving tithe and offering to the Lord. Amen? I promise you that. Um, and people say, oh, you're just saying it. Listen, it don't matter if you give a dime or a million. I'm not going to make any more or any less. Come on. Amen. I, I'm not in it for me. You know, you don't, it, that's, not, that's not what it is. It's, this is, this is the, to realize the blessing of God in your life through obedience and sacrifice and being honorable to Him and what He has told us to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Good deal. Also good to see Sister Judy in the house of the Lord with us. Amen. <laughs> Am I allowed right now to, to, to give more details? I'm asking. Yes. People know the truth. I don't want to be no surprise now. He's like, all right, I'm headed out the door. No, listen, I won't go into every detail, but Sister Judy went in the hospital not too long ago. And uh, it was just, um, you guys know that she went to have this kidney that is, it was injured years ago and, and now has quit functioning. And she went in to have that removed and to be able to get that over and, and done with her life. And while she was there, she had heart episodes and all kind of stuff went crazy. And so they've been just working on all this stuff. And so in the meantime, the kidney decided to show out and have a problem and it ruptured. It's swollen to many, many times larger than it should be. And without getting into the gory details, let me just tell you, it was very bad and very dangerous. And their, their, words, to, their words to her and her family were, if we don't stop this, you're going to die. If we try to do something about it, you're going to die. If we don't do something about it, you're going to die. And we can't put you to sleep. Because if you go to sleep, you're going to die. What would you say? So... You know, um, that's not a good place to be in, right? We got to do something, but we don't know what to do. And even if we do, we can't do it. That's where they were. But God. Amen. Now, listen, I want to tell you this. God gave these doctors wisdom. He led them. That's what we prayed. God, either you do it by a miracle or you let these doctors. And listen, they didn't think of it. It's not like God just said, oh, there's a good doctor. I think I'll use him. I'm glad he thought of that. The Bible tells us that all good things come down from the Father. He's the one that created us in all our minds, whether we recognize it or not. But God guided them and were able to help them and help her. And through the efforts that they've done, they, they, they just said, they told Brother Gerald, we're not sure if she's ever going to go home. Because he said, well, when's she going to get to go home? And he said, we don't know if she ever will. But I want to tell you, she's home. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and not just home, but getting around and sitting in the house of the Lord, worshiping God. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I'll tell you right now, she ain't dead. Yeah. Amen? And we speak life over her, and we declare what the Word says, that she shall live and not die yeah. until it's good in God time. And when he's ready, she'll go just like all the rest of us. Yeah. But until God says time, nay. Amen? Yeah. We say no. So, listen, continue to pray because the thing ain't over, the battle ain't over, she's still gaining strength, that... That, that, that ornery thing's still in there showing out, and, uh, but it can't win. Amen. Amen. So, you know, in God's timing, it's all going to come to pass and all going to do it. And listen, I know sometimes we say, well, I, I, you know, I don't know about these things. I don't know about these things. And y'all try to word stuff. Let me just give you uh, something to say. If some of you, if you say, I've never seen a miracle before, I wish I could see a miracle. I want you to just turn around and look at this lady right here in the green sweater with the little thing around her neck with her hand raised in the air. 
That's a miracle sitting right there. Amen? And I don't believe God's done yet. Amen? Can you agree with me on that? All right, praise the Lord. And we have a brand new little baby in the house, but we won't show you him right now because he's busy. And we've already met him once, so anyhow. Um, it's, just good that, it's just good to be in the, in the house of God. Amen? It's, it's, it's been a fantastic worship day already. And uh, I wanted to finish up this message uh, that I started last week called The Place of Habitation. The Place of Habitation. And uh, so we talked about the mercy seat. Everybody remember we talked about the mercy seat? Who remembers what the mercy seat is? Raise your hand. I'm not going to quiz you, so all of you didn't raise your hand. If you really know it, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Because you're like, I ain't raising my hand. You're going to call on me. No, that's not what it's about. Um, so we understand that the mercy seat was the, basically the lid of the Ark of the Covenant. And there were things placed in the ark. But here's the symbolic things of it. And I just want to give you a quick review. And I want you to, to see that based on what we have just experienced right now in our lives. In this worship service. When you place the sacrifices and the things remembered and the things offered to God. And then you make a place through worship for His presence to dwell. That's when He inhabits our praises. Amen? Everybody understand that? So we explained that, you know, once a year the, the priests would go in and sprinkle the blood and they would worship the Lord and the sins would be rolled back in them. But, but the thing about the Ark of the Covenant was there were those cherubs. Everybody remember we talked about cherubs? Not little fat baby angels. In fact, we read what they looked like and we're going to talk about that some more today. <clears throat> but they were um, on either side of the Ark of the Covenant on the mercy seat. And then the Bible says that the presence of God, the Shekinah glory of God, would come down and sit and rest on the mercy seat. And so you have to see the, 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 the symbolic thing there about worship. Because when the offerings are made and when the worship is made, it creates a place for the manifest habitation of God. Now, we often talk about visitation. God, we want you to visit us. God, show up. God, come and do this. But we don't need a visitation of God in our lives. We need a habitation of God in our lives. <clears throat> and so when we worship, as we have witnessed this morning, we create this place for Him to dwell and His presence manifests tangibly. Amen? Now, you may be here today, and you may be online watching, and you may think, I don't even understand some of the stuff they were doing. In fact, if it's the first time you've ever been around it, you may think, that was a little bit hokey. But one thing you won't be able to do is say you felt the presence of evil. You may not have understood what it was, but you felt the presence and the peace of God in it. And so we also talked about this. So the mercy seat then became the place for the presence of God. Right? And so watch this. I'm going to get you to where we are. Catch you up a little bit. <clears throat> so we came to the place where the presence of God was. And... Now, in the New Testament covenant, which we live in, everybody say we're Christians. Okay. The mercy seat, which is the habitation for the presence of God, is now Jesus Christ. See, Jesus became the place for the manifested, tangible presence of God to be. Does that make sense? And so Jesus became the mercy seat. And then we learned last week that God no longer has to come and come into the, the Holy of Holies one time a year because now He has a living temple. The Bible says He has placed His treasure 
into mortal bodies, earth clay vessels. That's, uh, everybody say he's talking about me. He's talking about me. And so the Bible says that now you are the, you are the habitation. You are the holy of holies in the New Testament and covenant. <clears throat> you are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. It says, do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? And so now we don't have to worry about coming and make sacrifice on one day a year and, 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 and the Lord show up and maybe we might catch a little bit of it, you know, coming out of the, of the Holy of Holies or the priest might throw a little on us some kind of way. God dwells not only with us, but in us. Now there's a lot of things that we need to understand about being the Holy of Holies, if you will, the temple of the living God, where not only the Spirit of God lives and dwells, but also the presence of God in the mercy seat, Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to you? See the symbolism and understand the correlation in the parallels. So now... We understand then that God has given us the opportunity to host his presence. Does that make sense to you? You say, well, what does that mean? Because God said he's with me and in me and he's going to go everywhere I go. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. Is that right? That's what he said. But there's a difference between that. See, that's positional. Everybody understand that? That's about justification, what we just talked about. Justification is what happens when you get saved. Justification is what happens when you are redeemed. That's positional. Now you belong to God, and nobody can take you out of His hand. Okay, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and your promise is heaven. That's an eternal promise. Okay? But you got to live in this world still. And you got to walk this walk out. And just like Jesus did when he came to the, when he came to the, 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 the uh, Jordan River and he said to John, he said, I need you to baptize me. And the Holy Spirit had told John, now listen, John had seen Jesus a lot in his life. They were cousins. However, John had been called by the Spirit of God to be the one who would go before Jesus. And he did not, did not even know it would be Jesus. He just knew God called him to come and preach and say, the, the, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is about to be here. The kingdom of God is coming. You need to get ready. The kingdom of God is coming. There's one coming after me. And I'm telling you, he's the Messiah. And he is powerful. And he's going to change everything. You need to get ready. You need to repent. You need to be ready for when he shows up. So, after all these times that they've taught together, I imagine even though the Bible doesn't say it in detail, I imagine with them being family, they had had get-togethers and, and, and you know, dinners and, and maybe played together. They were just a few, year, a few months apart from each other. You remember that Elizabeth, John's mother, was pregnant with him when Mary came and told Elizabeth, I'm pregnant, and I'm pregnant with the Son of God. Do you remember that? And Elizabeth didn't go, <coughs> no, can't be. In fact, Elizabeth had testimony that it was a deal from God because when that was said to her, the baby who was John, who we know as John the Baptist, in her belly leapt within her and then was filled with the Holy Ghost in her womb. That messes up some theology, don't it? And I got to believe she was too because how can you have a baby in your womb full of the Holy Ghost and you don't get, at least some fell on you a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Some of y'all need to get next to somebody who's really getting after God, who's really worshiping in the Spirit. Some of y'all, y'all see somebody worshiping in the Spirit and you're like, ooh, I want to stay away from that person. No, no, you need to go rub up against them. You know what I'm saying? They got a Jericho march or a dance going on. How about getting away, let them bump into you. Maybe it'll rub off on you. I'm just saying, that's, a, that's just trying to help you out. If you was thirsty, I'd give you something to drink, you know? Amen. Hebrews chapter 9, and on into the next chapter, described how Christ's coming 
And he came as a better high priest, serving in the heavenly tabernacle and offering a superior sacrifice of atonement. And the author of Hebrews goes on into great length to show that what Leviticus chapter 16 described was only looking forward to a more perfect sacrifice than any animal could do. See, the blood of Jesus is what made atonement for our sin. It wasn't just rolled back, it was done away with. So Jesus became, as I told you, the mercy seat. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you a scripture here. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. The word that's used there is the Greek word hilasterion. Hilasterion. And it, and it means, it's, it's translated in some, in some different translations, it's translated mercy seat. Uh, sometimes it's translated the word propitiation. Everybody say propitiation. propitiation. That's a hard word to use to say and it's a hard word to understand because we don't use that term much any longer. Um, and sometimes it's, it's translated sacrifice of atonement. But listen, regardless of the translation, it is God who presented Christ as the means of making atonement and the atonement received by faith in the blood of Jesus therefore makes us redeemed to God. And so as the redeemed, we now have the Spirit of God and the presence of God. Does that make sense to you? And so I want to show you a few things as we as we move forward so that was a good that was a good um what am i trying to say introduction that was a good um review and then i shared a few new things with you but let's let's talk a little bit about this this worship and how this all involves us because there are things we need to understand about our role and our promises in god as the place of habitation. Because we think the place of habitation for God is the throne room, right? Well, it is. But, and, but it can also be the altar, right? And it is. But then it can also be the world, right? Can it? And it is. But how often do you think that it's me. How often do you think, wait a minute, I am the place for the habitation of the presence of God? I think if we were more aware of that, that we would, I guess, you know, our, our human brains always go to negative first, don't they? So if we were more aware of that, we would be more careful about what we say and do and act and think. But, but I think better and more importantly than that, we would be more careful about not believing the lies and the deceit and destruction that the devil tries to whisper in our ear about who we are and who we're not and what we can have and what we can and what we're going to do and what we don't because he does not get to say what God does with his place of habitation. In fact, the only time he ever tried to say something about what God would do, he was immediately discarded from heaven. He ain't God. And you ain't either, by the way. Some of y'all needed to hear that. Because we, uh, we sometimes want to be in control of what happens in our lives. And God gives us choices to make. But listen, let God be in control. And He'll be the one who, who brings it all to pass. Amen? He'll be the one that does it all. He'll be the one that does it all. So we learned about these four living creatures. Do y'all remember that? We talked about the four living creatures. You don't remember that at all? Oh, okay. My wife just sent me a scripture reference and it says Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So there you go. That's a Bible girl right there. That's what she's there for, to help me. And to make me know I'm wrong when she's right. I'm just kidding. She was like, unbelievable. She's just helping me. And you. Everybody say thanks, Pastor Lori. Thank you, baby. Here's what this says. There are four living creatures. I want you to tell me if this sounds like chubby baby angels. There are four living creatures in the midst of the throne and around the throne, full of eyes in the front and the back. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature was like a calf. And the third living creature had a face of a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Now I didn't have to give you all the rest of that scripture after I described those little chubby baby angels. But I wanted to because it's good. But it's good for us to remember these things that we need to understand. So we were looking at these four living creatures and we're going to see some things that are foundational to the church in our lives as it has to do with the habitation of God, the mercy seat of God, His, his place of presence, and us as His temple. If that's all right, can you say amen? amen. If you didn't say amen, I'm going to do it anyways. I know it. Revelation 6 says, Now I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice like thunder, Come and see. And then verse 3 says this, And he opened the second seal, and I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. And verse 5 says, And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. And then when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come and see. So the living creatures speak and what they are saying is come and see the unfolding revelation of Jesus Christ. Now what we need to see about the book of Revelation that so many people miss is is that it's not just about the end times. We oftentimes look at the book of Revelation. Now why am I saying this? Because, let me make connection for you so in case you're missing it. We're talking about the mercy seat and the habitation of God and that Jesus is the mercy seat, that we are the temple where the Ark of the Covenant was, the Holy of Holies, right? So we're talking about the place where the presence of God is. Well, on either side of that mercy seat, or guess what? No. Chubby baby angels. Unbelievable. That was a good one, though. You, you're right with me. We're two of these cherubs, these living creatures. Are you got this? They were, they were likeness of two of those. In fact, they weren't just likeness. And maybe some people say, you don't read the Bible right. I just read it for what it says. Is that okay? Amen. In 1 in Kings, I, I believe it's 1 Kings, could be 2 Kings. One of the kings, those are books in the Bible, Old Testament. Here's what it says. When they brought the Ark of the Covenant out, when it was ready to go, when the presence of God showed up that first time, those cherubs that were made out of wood and covered with gold that were just representations of it, it said they stretched their arms out across the ark. (laughs) 
This is what I'm trying to tell you right now. And somebody may say, well, that's not what it means. You keep that, I'll keep what I think, okay? Those things came to life and stretched their arms out to cover the Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat and the presence of God. Those are the things that are constantly in the presence of the Lord. And the presence of God is what made dead things come to life. Do you see that? Uh. I'll just stop preaching right there. So these living creatures are saying, come and see. And Revelation is not just about the end time, but it's also about the now time. It tells us the time before the fall. It tells us about created things. It tells us about Satan and a third of the angels. That's not future. It's now. It's already happened. It tells us about the coming of Messiah the first time. It tells us about the birth of the church. You see, you, if, if, if you miss all of this revelation, because you're just looking for revelation at the end time, you know what the first five words of that book says? Somebody's turning to it right now. This is what it says. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation means revealing. It comes from the Greek word apocalypsis. And by the way, I know that most people just do this at era, but this is one of the things that kind of sticks in my crawl. It's not revelations with an S. It's just revelation. God just showed it. Revelation. Now, there's a lot of things in it, but it was a revealing. And that's what the Lord is still doing today, revealing. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing, revealing, teaching, helping us to understand who we are, what we do, and how we live until the day he calls us home. Amen, somebody? Amen. And so these four living creatures represent the four foundations for the church. That's me. Everybody say he's talking about me. That's you, that's me. So this is where we all tie it in. So we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the New Testament Holy of Holies, okay? We are the place where the mercy seat sits because we are the habitation for the presence of God. I will be with them and I will be in them and I will never leave them nor forsake them. Everybody with me so far? Take a message for me. So I won't go into all of this, but if you go back to Ezekiel and you look at verses one, or chapter 1, Let me just read a little bit of it because you'll see the difference. You'll see the similarities and the understanding that I'm saying here. Y'all with me okay? All right, I got two minutes left to tell you all this. That truly is unbelievable. I need to start carrying a handkerchief again. How, do, how is the Church of God preacher not have a handkerchief? That's what I want to know. I know I got a whole drawer full. I got so many other things in my pockets, I can't even get a handkerchief in my pocket. I'm glad Brother Frazier had to step out for that. He'd, he'd have shunned me. He said in verse 4 of Ezekiel 1, When I looked, behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, and a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it, radiating out of the midst of the color of amber and, and the midst of fire. Also from within it came the likenesses of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. As for the likeness of their faces, each one had the face of a man. Uh, each one of the four had the face of a lion. On the right side, each one of the four had the face of an ox or a calf in Revelation. On the left side, uh, and, on, and uh, each one of them had the face of an eagle in the back. So not only were those four creatures what they looked like, Ezekiel tells us and shows us that they had four faces. Does that make sense? They had a man, 
and an ox, and a lion. It's an ox here. Revelation calls it a calf. So just get your wrap your mind around around the cow, okay? Something bovine, and a lion, and then an eagle. It's pretty cool. Sounds just like a little chubby baby angel to me. I'm just having fun with that, y'all. But still, if you got chubby baby angels in your house, get them out. Now I looked at the living creatures. Behold, a wheel was on the, north, uh, on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. And the wheel represents the Holy Spirit. And we'll get that at in, in a minute. And when they moved, they went toward... Uh, when they moved, they went toward any of the four directions, and they did not turn aside when they went. And so, what I want to show you is this is how it was. If I had, if I had, um, well, let me just do this. Michael, Nathan, Jeff, Kevin, y'all come here real quick. Hurry, 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 hurry. This will be in the dark. Sorry, you folks on TV. All right, Nathan, face that way. Uh, Mike, you face that way. Right here. Come on, turn around. Face this way. Well, this ain't this ain't rocket science. Come on, turn it Stand up, move, Nathan. Move with me, son. Okay, this is one creature. So you guys don't turn, but when I move, when the when the wheel moves this way, you move this way. And when the meal, wheel moves this way, you move this way. And when I and when the wheel moves this way, you move this way. And the wheel goes this way, you move that way. And your face still looks one direction, and you're still all four, and the wheel is the Spirit of God. You remember that? Okay, thank you guys. Give those guys a hand. What amazing. I want to make sure Talent Scout gets your names, especially you, Nathan. <laughs> huh? Birthday boy. Oh, and also happy birthday to Sister Yvonne. She's 29. Okay, listen, this is what it says. When the living creatures went, the wheel went beside them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Sorry, y'all, but I, I didn't feel like lifting y'all up. Wherever the Spirit wanted to go, they went. Because there the Spirit went. And the wheels were lifted together with them, and the spirit of the living creatures was also in the wheels. So you understand what we're looking at here. So each of the living creatures represents four foundations of us, the living habitation of God. The Holy Spirit is the one leading them. So it says the spirit went this way, it went that way. And the whole way he went, it was the face of a man. The spirit went this way, they went that way, and the whole way they went was the face of an ox. When the spirit went this way, it was the face of a lion. When the spirit went this way, it was the face of an eagle. Everybody following what I'm saying? So everybody say, he's talking about me. Look at your wife, say, he called you an ox. <laughs> Just kidding. One of them looked like this, and the guy went, nope, nope, I ain't saying that. I didn't call you an ox, ladies. The Bible did. So here's the thing. Follow me. Each creature had four faces. The man represents Jesus and grace. The lion represents prayer and warfare. The ox represents servanthood and humility. And the eagle represents worship. And they all face one direction and they move wherever the spirit wants them to go, but they don't turn. So the spirit is in the wheels and he leads the creatures. Now, where does the spirit lead and guide? Well, Jesus said this in John 16, 12. I have so much more to tell you and show you, but I cannot bear it now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes... He will guide you and lead you into all truth. The Holy Spirit leads, guide, and gives direction. Calls, gives discernment, wisdom, and understanding. So He leads us 
the church, the temple of God, the place of the living habitation of God, individually and corporately, He leads us, you and I, wherever we need to go, wherever He wants us to go. So He leads us and guides us in one direction. You remember, as He's guiding us in that direction... The four faces are. So let me, let me skip to the end. Let me get to the, me get to the punchline for you, okay? So you can understand this. So the habitation of God. Everybody says he's talking about me. Because you are the place where Jesus lives. And where he lives is his habitation. Does that make sense? Some people might say it this way. If he's the mercy seat... And you're the temple of the living God in the Holy of Holies. That means symbolically what's wrapped up in you are the things that were in the Ark of the Covenant and God's promise. The manna, God's provision. The temple. I mean the uh, tablet, God's word and God's law and God's promises. The bud that sprung life. God's life. God's grace, God's miracles. Are you seeing all this? And so as we see in the presence of God are these cherubs. And they never stop day or night doing what they do. And so symbolically, we as the church, because we have different functions and different things, but they all wrapped up in us as a body of the church, but then also wrapped up in you as an individual of the church. So corporately, it says that God will move us in seasons sometime. There'll be a season of you seeing God's grace in the face of Jesus. There'll be seasons where you see worship like crazy. There'll be other seasons when it's service, 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 and another season where it's warfare and, and going at it. But the truth is, it all is happening at one time in the corporate body, and it's all happening at one time in you as the living habitation. Do you understand that? And so you're going to be moving as the Spirit moves. And when the Spirit moves you this way, they're going to see the face of a man and you're going to be operating in God's grace. And then you're going to go this way and it's about servants. And this way I'm worshiping. And this way I'm working as a warrior and I'm fighting spiritual battles and maybe physical battles in my life. But as the habitation of God where the presence of God is and as the temple of God where the Spirit of God is, He leads us and guides us and He will be with us always. This is what you need to see about being the habitation. He is with you, but He leads you to go in battle. He leads you to go in grace. He leads you to go in worship. He leads you to go in service. And He doesn't just lead you to go one of those. He leads you in all of those. Now, I want to tell you one other thing that I see in this picture. Are you ready for this? Now, this is my own supposition as I feel the Holy Spirit has led me. You study and pray, and I don't believe the Lord will show you anything different. He may show you something added to or, or maybe a little more understanding about something or something like that. But I'm not trying to rewrite the Bible, so don't send me emails. But here's what I see. There was another angel that used to be in the presence of God. And the Bible says he was the most beautiful, the most talented. He was an archangel. He was one of the most, the most he was an angel, one of the angels that had the most authority, power, and gifting. He was high, 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 high up the food chain. And the angelic being ranks. He was in the very presence of God every day. But he's not anymore. Why? Because he decided 
it's not about God anymore. I'm going to make it about me. I'm going to be God. Are you with me? And Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning from heaven. There wasn't a struggle either, by the way. And if you think there's a struggle between God and the devil, you're sadly mistaken. In fact, he's not even really strong enough to beat another angel. Because the Bible says in, Revelation, in, in the book of Revelation that you will see that Michael the archangel overcomes him and throws him to the earth. God doesn't need to do anything to the devil. He just lets another angel take care of it. Now, can I tell you, he's a powerful being when you're compared to you and I. But when compared to God, he's nothing. God spoke him into this existence. You following me? But what made him rejected from the presence of God, from the habitation of God, was him not honoring God. And him wanting to do it his way and him saying, I'm going to be God. And you say, well, I've never said I'll be God. Uh, have you? Have you ever said, I don't care, I'm going to do what I want? Have you ever said, that's the way I am and I can't help it. That's just going to be that way. Have you ever said, I'm going to do this, I don't care if it kills me. This is what I believe. This is what I think. This is what I want. I, 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 me, me, my, my. Now, I'm not saying we don't have a job to do, and I'm not saying that God doesn't grant us some of the desires of our heart. He does. I'm not saying that we don't get something out of this. We do. But what I'm saying is when you put yourself on the throne, you disqualify yourself from the presence the manifest presence of God. Are you following that? Yeah. And so, here's what you need to see about these creatures and how it applies to us. And I know I'm mixing a bunch of stuff and I'm going to get, the, the theologians probably want to fuss at me, but I don't really care. I, I, this is what I see from the Spirit of God. And you can go back and look at the Word. I, I am accountable to the Word of God. And I'm not trying to be ugly. But a lot of people think they know a bunch of stuff they really don't know. Are you with me? Don't get quiet. I'll stop right there and preach a second. These creatures, because they moved where the Spirit moved and did what the Spirit did and followed what the Spirit said, they were in the presence of God always, nonstop, continually. The presence of God was right there. And so here's what I want you to understand, church. There is a presence of God, and there is a manifest presence of God. There is a visitation of God, and there is a habitation of God. In the Old Testament, it was a visitation. In the New Testament, it was a habitation. And we've seen spots and things go along. There's a revival over here and a little move over there. And whoo, we had a time that night. But I want to tell you, I'm tired of the times and the spots and the moves. I want it to be wherever I am that the habitation of God is always there. And so I, I realize I'm focusing. This is to help all of us understand what God is calling us to be. We said we got to be people of another sort. We got to be people that God is moving in and doing something with. We got to be people of prayer. Listen, it's not hard to pray when you realize I'm the habitation of God. It's not hard to pray when you realize that Shekinah glory can rest on you. It's not hard to worship when you realize God's about to show up in a tangible way. And I'm just going to honor him. I, I loved it this morning when Pastor Lori said, we are going to worship him. We ain't going to ask him for nothing. We ain't going to beg for no promises or throw out our list and say, you owe me this, God. All we're going to do is just glorify and honor him. And man, those songs just lined up. And as we began to get out of our place of comfort and worship, man, the Spirit of God started moving. 
then we could ask and walls came down. Amen? And so hear me. If you want the manifest presence, you want the habitation of God in here and wherever you are, you move when He moves and do what He says and go where He goes and listen to Him and honor Him and let Him have His place because He's God and we aren't. And we glorify Him. We don't deserve glory. But we want His glory. Amen. Are, are y'all okay with this? I hope you receive this. I, I've, I've, I've tried to make it very simple. It's really complicated. I feel like I've done it some injustice, but I hope that you get what I'm saying. And here's what I want to do. I want to end this service. We've had prayer. We've had worship. We've had the Word. And I want to end this service with Holy Communion. And all of you should have received elements as you came in the door or as you were seating. Is there anyone that needs any that didn't get it? Pastor Lori needs some right down here. And surprise, surprise, so does Pastor John. Thank you. Now, some people say, y'all do this too much. We celebrate and remember the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday most of the time. Unless we make a change for a particular strategic reason. But we do it once a month at least. I know some people that do it once a day. And you say, well that's too much. No, it's not. Jesus never said, do this once, do this twice. He didn't, he didn't limit us. He said, as often as you do this, just remember me. Remember me. In fact, Lori is, is, in a, is in a book, a study within her own self and her own physical journey right now. Rereading or reading and go, vi, revisiting a, a thought in a book called The Meal That Heals. And, and honoring God and what He's done as her healer by His broken body, by His shed blood. We have healing. Amen? Amen? And so as we receive today, I want to receive, I want to thank the Lord for His sacrifice. I want to thank the Lord for His salvation and redemption. And I also want to thank God that He has made us the place where His presence can habitate. Amen? Uh, here's what the, worship, the Word says. The Word says that the Lord will dwell with us. The word dwell there, when you study it, it means He will make Himself at home. And that's what Jesus taught us to pray, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you know what happens in heaven? Some of y'all are going, okay, there's worship, there's, there's people throwing crowns, there's rivers and trees, and there's all kinds of stuff going. Here's what happens in heaven. Whatever God wants. His will, His per whatever He wants. Don't you want that in your life? Your will be done, Lord. Your will be done in me. as it is in heaven on earth Lord God as it is in heaven thank you God for your covenant thank you for your love thank you for the blood thank you for the cross come on just worship him a second will you just in the peace and beautiness of beauty of holiness. Praise you, Jesus. Come and be with us, Lord. 
let this body, not only our corporate body, this place, this house of worship, but God, our daily lives be the place of your habitation. Holy Spirit, fill us and refill us. Guide us and lead us and give us dunamis in our life. Lord Jesus, make yourself at home in us. Let us be your habitation, Lord, until we can spend all of eternity with you. Spend it with us as we do your work, as we do your will, as we walk the walk that you've called us to walk in you. Bless now, Lord, as we receive. Thank you for your broken body, your shed blood. God, not only do all these things that we've asked, but we pray and believe for healing. We pray and believe for miracles. We pray and believe for deliverance. We pray and believe for restoration, for redemption, God. It's all accomplished through you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know what it is, Melissa, but sing it. It sounds good. bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace God is good amen God is good all the time go with knowledge and, and understanding of who you are and also walk in the same authority power and empowerment that God has given you realizing that the very God who spoke this into existence said I will live in you amen amen God bless you you're dismissed in the name of the Lord hey I mean seniors <laughs>